Here we're going to look at an application of the chain rule for finding implicit derivatives. So we'll prove uh, two statements in one theorem. So let's suppose that y is a function of x that's defined implicitly by um, the formula f of xy equals c, which is a constant, where capital F is some function of x and y. Then the derivative of y with respect to x, which we could also call that y prime, is equal to negative the partial of f with respect to x divided by the partial of f with respect to y. Then we've got a two variable version of that. So if we suppose that z is a function of x and y and it's implicitly defined by the function capital F x y z equals a constant. So in some ways this is like a level surface of a function of three variables. Then we have the partial of z with respect to x is negative the partial of f with respect to x over f with respect to z, and then the partial of z with respect to y is also pretty similar, so the partial of f with respect to y divided by the partial of f with respect to z times uh, minus 1. Okay, so let's look at how this works. I'm going to go ahead and just prove uh, this statement right here because this is very, very similar. So let's consider... And I should say that this is really just a sketch of the proof. So let's consider the following diagram. So we have capital F, and let's look at its functional dependence. So notice it's going to depend on the variable X, it's going to depend on the variable Y, and it will depend on the variable Z. But then we're assuming that capital F equals a constant defines Z implicitly as a function of X and Y. So that means that Z is a function of X and Y. Okay, so now we're going to take the derivative of this diagram, if you will. So in other words, we have this formula f of x, y, z equals a constant, and we're going to take the derivative of each side of this with respect to x. The partial with respect to x here, and then the derivative with respect to x here. Okay, great. So using the chain rule, we see that we need to take two paths from the top, which is f, to the bottom, which is x. And that first path is the partial of f with respect to x. So that's going to be given by this orange bit right here. And then the second path will take you down to this uh, second root of f, which will be plus the partial of f with respect to z times the partial of z with respect to x. Okay, good. But then we're taking the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to x as well, but that's going to be equal to zero because that's just a constant. Okay, so now let's look at what we have here. We have this equation that we can solve for partial of z with respect to x, but before we do that, let's change this to friendlier notation so we can write partial of f with respect to x as f sub x plus f sub z partial of z with respect to x equals zero. But now it's easy to see that we can solve this partial of z with respect to x equals negative f z over f x. Obviously provided the partial with respect to x is not zero. Okay, good. And then the partial of z with respect to y will be done the same way except we're going to the root variable y instead of x. Okay, I'm going to clean up the board and we'll look at a couple of examples. Okay, so first we'll look at this example which is going to be an application of this first thing that we stated but didn't prove, but you can imagine that we could prove this basically the same way as we proved this bit down here. So we've got this uh, curve which is defined implicitly by the following formula. So we've got 3x squared minus 2xy plus y squared minus 4x minus 6y equals 11. So this thing right here is our function capital F of xy which is equal to 11 and that's implicitly defining y as a function of x. And so our goal is to write an equation of a tangent line at a certain point. So that means we need to find the slope of that tangent line, which we can do by finding the derivative of y with respect to x. That's always going to give us the slope of the tangent line. So by this theorem, we have that this is minus the partial of f with respect to x over the partial of f with respect to y. But we are interested at the point 2, 1, so we can denote that in the following way.
Okay, so now we just have to take some partial derivatives. So that's going to be negative, and then the partial of f with respect to x, so let's see, that's going to be 6x minus 2y plus 4 over, now we've got the partial of f with respect to y, so let's see what that is. That will be minus 2x um, plus 2y minus 6. Now we've got to evaluate this at 2, 1. Okay, so let's see what we get when we evaluate this at 2, 1. Here we're going to have negative out front, and now we have uh, 12 minus 2 plus 4 in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we have minus 4 plus 2 minus 6. Um, and then let's see what that is. 12 minus 2 is 10 plus 4 is 14. So we have negative 14 over. Now let's see, negative 4 minus 6. Uh, is going to be negative 10 uh, plus 2 is negative 8. So we get a negative 8 in the denominator, which will cancel that uh, in the following way. Okay, so notice that's going to be the same thing as 7 over 4. 7 over 4. And so we've got a slope of our line. The slope is 7 over 4. We've got a point, but then by the point slope form of the line, we can write this. This is y minus the y part of the point equals 7 fourths x minus the x part of the point. So there's going to be our equation of our tangent line. All right, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at one more. Okay, so for our last example, we want to look at the equation that defines implicitly z as a function of x and y. So we've got x squared times sine y plus y times e to the z equals 3. So you could solve this for z if you wanted to. Uh, we have an inverse function of the natural log in order to do that, but it's just as easy not to. Okay, so we want to find the partial of z with respect to x and the partial of z with respect to y. So notice here we have this bit is going to be our function function f, x, y, z equals 3, and that's the way that we're defining z as a function of x and y. So now we need all of these parts. We need the partial of f with respect to x, y, and z. So let's collect those parts. So the partial of f with respect to x, so notice the only x is in the first term, so that's going to give us 2x times sine y, okay? Now the partial of f with respect to y, so notice there's a y in the first bit and the second bit. The y in the first bit is going to give us x squared cosine y. And the y in the second bit is just going to give us plus e to the z. And then finally, fz, the partial of f with respect to z. There's no z in the first bit, so that's a constant with respect to z. And then we have y times e to the z, but the derivative of e to the z is just going to be e to the z. So here we get y e to the z. Okay, great. Now we're ready to go. We can just apply these formulas. So we have the partial of z with respect to x. That's going to be negative. The partial of f with respect to x over f with respect to z. So that's going to be 2x sine y over y e to the z. Okay, so we've got the partial of z with respect to x. So now let's look at the partial of z with respect to y. Okay, so that's going to be the partial of f with respect to y over the partial of f with respect to z. So that'll be this guy over that guy. So we've got x squared cos y plus e to the z over y e to the z. Okay, and now we're done.